permission, we want to certainly greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, by whichever means you are doing that, whether it's Facebook, whether it is Zoom. I want to thank uh, our team so much for all the work that they have done this week in order to make this experience possible to our media team that has worked to make sure uh, we had everything up to par to our praise and worship. Uh, team who have come uh, as well and then to our ministers who have done an amazing job ministering without a live audience and so we thank everyone so much for uh, their presence and to you for viewing and again being part of this worship experience. Let us pause for a word of prayer. Father we thank you so much for this day and for the opportunity to look into your word and we pray Lord that as we look into your word that you will challenge and inspire us through the truth of scripture. For what's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We certainly want to invite you to join us in Psalm 51, a song we want to look at today. Over the last, uh, over year, over year, we have been walking through the book of First and Second Samuel and uh, as we have walked through the books of First and Second Samuel, we were in Second Samuel chapter 12 last week where David uh, confesses his sin and his relationship to Bathsheba with Bathsheba and the killing of her husband Uriah. And we said last week that we were going to take a few weeks off from our journey and study and series through the book of First Samuel and look at two Psalms related directly to that particular incident, and today is Psalm 51, Psalm 51, and it says, Have mercy, beginning with verse 1, Psalm 51, verse 1, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. This morning, as we continue uh, looking at David and his situation, we want to talk from the subject, what do you do when you've blown it? All right. What do you do when you have blown it, when you've messed up, when you've done things that you should not have done and said things that you shouldn't have said and gone places that you shouldn't have gone? What do you do when you have undoubtedly really, really messed up this time? Now, I know many of you who may be viewing this and listening might say, Chris, this doesn't really apply to me. I live a pretty good life. There's nothing wrong with me, and there, I have no regrets. I have no regrets. But there are a few of us, there are a few of us in the listening audience who realize that that's not our situation, that's not our plight, that's not our testimony, that's not our story, that we have failed and many of us have failed more than one time. Many of us have done things, and we've done things that we are really ashamed of. And many of us have said, that's why I don't have time to spend time talking about the skeletons in your closet. Because if the truth be told, you open minds and you'll find a corpse there. Because it hadn't been too long ago that I've done what I shouldn't have done. I've done things that I shouldn't have done. What? What do, you do what do you do when you have blown it? In fact, if you look at Psalm 51, where you are today, it says under, before verse one, a superscription in some Bibles, and it gives the occasion for which the Psalm was written. David writes this Psalm, and David is a Psalmist, a worship leader, and writes a Psalm, a Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. And as we have over the last several months journeyed through these books, we saw that Israel wanted a king. God gave them, God gave them a king according to their desire. God gave them Saul. Saul proved to be a man who did not have God's heart. He would not follow God's rules. And so God made a commitment that Saul, I'm going to remove you. I'm going to remove you. And I'm going to give in the, your place a king after my own heart. David was chosen. 
one who many did not see as one that was fit to be king. He had brothers that could have been chosen before him, but God took David from watching sheep to be king over Israel. It had been a long, difficult time before, after God had anointed him, before David actually became king, but God was faithful. And it was a reminder to us as we journey through that story that a delay is not a deny. Yes. Mm. That God is sometimes preparing us for what we are unable to handle right now. Yeah. Come on, man. David, become king over Israel. And as king over Israel, God had certainly blessed David. Yeah. He had blessed him. He had blessed the kingdom, blessed him financially. He had blessed him with women and with his wives and children, his family. Had blessed him with great committed military leaders. God had been faithful. God had been faithful to David. Yeah. We saw as we look at 2 Samuel chapter 11 that when God blesses you, you got to be careful that you don't get the big head. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get the big head. And David, David begins to get the big head. When the kings we saw in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 11, were off at war. David was at home, being idle. And we, as we said, as we journeyed through 2 Samuel chapter 11, be careful, because an idle mind becomes the devil's workshop. And he saw Bathsheba, called for her, had her to come home and slept with her. Became, she became pregnant. And David began to do the great cover. Yeah. He called for Uriah to come back from the battlefield. Come back from the battlefield. In order that he might cover up to have him to sleep with his wife. But his commitment did not allow him to do that. When that didn't work, David did plan B. Get him drunk. When that didn't work, David says, let me do plan C. He had... Uriah set up to be killed. Uriah set up to be killed in battle. Very tragic. David now is in, a, in his mind in a sweet spot. Yeah. He's done the great cover up. After all, he is king over Israel. He has now beautiful Bathsheba living with him. Uh -huh. They have a son. Yeah, yeah. He feels good. He feels good. But we saw at the end of 2 Samuel chapter 11 that the thing David did displeased the Lord. It displeased the Lord. God was not happy. And although nobody knew all that David had done, God knew. God knew his secrets. God knew his plot and plan. God knew how far David had moved outside of his will. Yes. And unfortunately, David became comfortable. Mm -hmm. And as we said, as we journeyed through that section, looking at 2 Samuel chapter 12, you know you are in a dangerous spot when you can do wrong by people and still sleep at night. Yeah. And so last week, as we journeyed through the first part of 2 Samuel chapter 12, we talked about the high price of low living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That David did not realize that his sin would come with such a high price until his pastor Nathan comes to visit and says, Nathan, there was a man, and he had very little, and a king that had a whole lot. And a, a, a visitor came through town, and the king that had a whole lot took the little thing that that man had, and and killed his lamb that he had invested in, that he had worked for, that he had loved, that he had slept with. And David, when he heard that story, he burned with anger. He became upset and, and, and so much righteous indignation. And David says, that man ought to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. To which Nathan replies, you the man. Yeah, you You've been low down. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been dirty. Yeah. David has been confronted with his sin. Yes, yes. David has been confronted with his wrongdoing. Yes. Looks to Nathan and says, Nathan, I've sinned. Mm -hmm. 
I messed up. And David is still a man after God's own heart because being a man after God's own heart doesn't mean that you won't fail. Doesn't mean that you won't fall. It doesn't mean that you won't sin. It doesn't mean that you won't go astray. But it means that when you are confronted, you agree with God about your situation, about your plight, and, and you work hard to get it right. And it is out of that context that David pins Psalm 51 my, my, my. Look, look. to let us know what we do and what we can do when we've blown it, when we've messed up, when we have failed, when we've done things that we are ashamed of. Things that we've been embarrassed by. And, and everybody else might not see. We might look good to everybody else on the outside. But we know that there are major issues we're dealing with on the inside. David begins his prayer. David begins his prayer in verse 1. Notice what he says. God, when I look at my sin, when I look at what I've done, when I look at low, how low down I've been, That's right. committing murder, yeah. Yeah, yeah. committing adultery, yeah, yeah. sweeping it under the rug, under the rug. Yeah. what I want you to do is have mercy. Yeah. And mercy, as we've seen in previous occasions, mercy is when God withholds from us something that we should have got. When I look at my sin, when I look at how I've done wrong, when I look at how I've been hard-headed, when I look at how I slept with another man's wife, when, when I look at how I murdered him, when I look at all the commandments that I've broken, when I knew better. Yes, yes, yes. My God. God, I know judgment should be my plan. Yeah. But I'm asking you, God, I'm asking you, God, as I now recognize that, but that I have failed, God, I'm asking you to have mercy. Have mercy. Withhold from me what I should be getting. Yes. And, and God, the reason why I know I should be getting because I know that I failed. The reason why I'm pleading for your mercy, God, the reason why I'm pleading for your mercy, oh God, is because you always demonstrate, God, you uh, according to your uh, unfailing love, it, it is according to your grace. And, and where mercy is where, when God withholds from us with that which I shouldn't have, should have gotten, grace is when God gives me that which I shouldn't get. Mercy is when he withholds what I should get. His grace and unfailing love is when he gives me what I don't deserve. His grace and love. I need you to do some things for me, God. I need you as I appeal to you. I need you to do a few things for me. Yeah, yeah. Blot out. White out. Yeah. My transgression. Yes, yes. Now the word transgression is rather strange. Mm. Notice he doesn't begin by saying, blot out my sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the word for sin it is the word that means Mr. Mark. It, it was designed of an individual that would be shooting a bow and arrow. And, and as he shoots the bow and arrow, he has a mind that I want to hit the bullseye. My goal is to hit the bullseye. But because I have fraud, failed to, because I have fought, every now and then I'll miss the bullseye. I didn't intend to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I missed it. But it's not. Forgive me my sin. It's forgive me my transgression. Because transgression is the word that if you were going down the street and there was a big sign that says no, trans no trespassing, and because you wanted it, you decided it 
regardless of what the sign says, and I know what the sign says, and I know I don't have no business going there, but you know what? I'm going there anyway. And you know what David says? There were signs all along the road that says, David, don't go there. You willingly, and God, I willingly disobeyed you. And I disobeyed you when I saw the warning sign. Yes. Blot out. Notice three words about his sin, about his transgressions. Notice, not, not only I need you to blot out my transgressions, God, I need you to wash me. I need you to wash me of, of my iniquity, God. I need you to wash me clean. I am dirty. I am filthy. And, and not only do I need you to blot it out and wash, but I need you to cleanse me, God. I'm filthy. I'm dirty. I'm a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And notice how wretched and low down David sees his plot. Three words he uses. Transgression, iniquity, and sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, why do I need you to do that for me? Because God, I confess. Not only do I pray to you, God, but I confess. Because verse three, notice, his confession as he recognizes his the error of his ways as he recognizes that 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 he have had transgressions that he has had iniquities that he has sinned that that God I have messed up I have gotten so far out there but that it started with one thing with me knowing what I should have done but it, it snowballed and, and, and after a while I found myself doing more things because that's the way sin does what what you start on it it causes you to cover up sin after sin after sin. God, I know, for I know, I know my transgressions. I know where I've been wrong. That's right. And see, that's the first step of you trying to get some help mm -hmm. when you've messed up. Yeah, yeah. Is you first of all gotta acknowledge yeah. and realize. And come to grips yeah. with the fact that you messed up. Yeah. God, I know I've messed up. I know my transgressions. And in fact, God, you know what? I've been trying to play cover up very well. I, I've been trying to make, make it look like all is okay. I, I've been trying to make it look like that everything is in order. But my God, you know what? I, I've been playing them. I've been, I've been faking and shaking because my sin is always against. It is always before me. God, everywhere I go. <laughs> Every time I look at that sheep, I'm reminded. That was another man's wife. And every time I look at that baby boy, I'm reminded. Every time I look at out the window, and I see my neighbor's house that used to be there, that was doing fine, that I killed. I'm reminded. No way I can run. Mm -hmm. No way I can hide. God, and the reality is, this is bigger than just sitting against Bathsheba. Yeah, I did her wrong. Yeah. I was the king. I shouldn't have gone there. She going to do what I tell her to do because I'm the king. Yeah. I, 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 I did wrong. And, and, and what I did in Kevin Uriah kill it, it was a low down dirty shame that I would do that but it's bigger than a Uriah mm -hmm. and it's bigger 
then a Bathsheba. All right. The bigger issue is God. I did wrong against you. Yeah. And God, it's against you and only you have I done evil in your sight, God. Because see, at the end of the day, you are the one that can judge me. You are the one that will have the final say so. All right, all right. So God, as I look at my sin, yeah, yeah. and I look at what I'm getting right now, I say, God, you are right. That's right. I agree with you. That's right. I'm not going to play the blame game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transition. And God, because you are right, whatever you give me, I deserve. You are justified when you judge. In fact, God, let me tell you, God, as I continue to confess my faults, confess my failures, confess my shortcomings, this ain't just stall with me looking at the roof over there and seeing that sheep. You know what, God, I've been sinful and I was sinful at my birth. I, I was sinful from the time my mother Conceit. Selfish. self -centered. Even when I was in the womb, and I didn't get things my way, you know what I did? I kicked her. Come on, Pastor. I kicked her. I wanted her to know. I don't like the position I'm in. I want you to know, I don't like what you had last night for dinner. I, I, don't, I want you to know that I don't like them broccoli. I don't like them Brussels sprouts. And, and so when you eat those things, and, and I don't like them, I'm going to let you know. Because this ain't about you, mama. This about me. And you know what? Once I get here, make y'all stay up at night. I don't care if y'all had a good night's sleep or not. This thing about me. You ever notice you have to teach us children how to read, how to write, how to do science, how to do math, how to respect one another. But you ever notice, you ain't got to teach your child how to lie. You ever notice you ain't got to say, baby, come on, we're going to have a line one on one. I'm going to teach you how to be a good liar. From birth, the sinful nature which we all have. Yes. Because we all have an atomic nature, a nature like the Adam, because of Adam's sin, we are all sinners. Yes. Right, right. And that's why I like to remind people, you ain't got to say for you, uh, the Bible says for all, not y'all. Yeah. All of us. Oh, that's right. We have all come short. Yeah, and yet, that ain't no excuse. Amen. Amen. That's not an excuse. <laughs> yeah, I may be a sinner from my birth. I may have sinned since my mother conceived me. Yet in the womb, you desire faithfulness. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. You know what, God? I know that. Yes. And, and when I look at what I did, when I look at how I have failed you, when I look at what my, 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 my transgressions, when I look at how low down and dirty and messed up I was, yeah, yeah. I can't play the blame game. All right. I can't 
can't say, Lord, you know, I messed up. Because my daddy was a mess. And my daddy's daddy was a mess. God says, no excuse. Yeah. And the reason why you know you know better, because you're always trying to cover it up. So God, since I've confessed my sins, I need you to do a few things for me, God. I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to cleanse me. I need you to cleanse me with hyssop. And hyssop was used in the Bible to, as part of the sacrifice in order to make something clean. And, and you know what David says, God, verse 7. As you clean me with hyssop and put it into Dave's vernacular, I, I need you to put me in a washing machine. Because I'm filthy. Clean me up. And if you put me in the washing machine, if you cleanse me, I will be clean. In fact, God, if you get involved in it, if you cover me by, by, by this blood, if you cover me by this blood, if you cover me by this blood, as they did in the Old Testament, I shall be whiter than snow. Yes. In the Old Testament, they would take a scrub and apply blood and it would clean and purify and make it holy. And we sing a song that is very applicable right here. Mm -hmm. And the song simply says, the blood ah. still works. Still yeah. works. That's works. Yeah. In fact, another songwriter says, and it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter how far out you may be, because it reaches to the highest mountain realized this is greater 
than trying to deal with my external appearance. Yeah. I got some inter internal issues. Yeah. You know what God, over the last year, my bones have been crushed. And you know, ain't no hurt like being hurt to the bone. God, my bones, it's been, it's been a hard journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a difficult journey. Mm -hmm. A lot that I've had to deal with. <coughs> so I need you, God, to do something for me. Hide your sin, hide your face from my sin. God, give me another chance. Notice what he prays in this verse, in verse 9, as he continues to make his request to God. The same thing that he started out in, in verse 1. Blot out! Wow. Now, not only do I need you to blot out, but, but I need you to create in me a clean and pure heart. Yes. God, you know how I ended up in this mess. I had some heart issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why the Bible is so clear. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Come on, man. Because out of it comes those issues. You, you gotta be careful what you allow to impact your heart. God, I don't need you just to fix up my heart. Yeah. This heart is so wretched and low down and dirty. I need you to give me a total heart transplant. Look, look. Yeah. And that's one of the things that God has cleared that he's going he's gonna to remove this heart of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and give you a heart of flesh. Yeah. And as we told uh, uh, our congregation last week, as we said last some folk ain't got to ever worry about having a heart attack. Why? You ain't got no heart. Because you can do just any old thing. God renew a spirit in me that will do the right thing. God, as I look at my sins, and I know God, as I've said, you right. I know I'm wrong. Yeah. God, I know that whatever you do, I deserve. Kill the man's wife. Kill the man. Slept with his wife. I ain't got nothing to say. But God, I'm going to ask you, verse 11, Don't take me to the landfill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't throw me in the trash. Yeah. Don't cast me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. And, 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 and that's rather interesting that he would pray that because as New Testament believers, the Holy Spirit lives within us. He resides never to leave us. But, but what David understood that there are times when God can kick you to the curb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you can be like, Paul says, I don't want to preach to others. And then myself become disqualified. Mm -hmm. That meant a lot to David because see, he had seen a man that was anointed, that had the Spirit of God saw on him, that God was greatly using. And, and because he had made dumb decisions, because he was going to determine that he was going to do it his own way, because he didn't have a heart, because he wouldn't repent. God says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to choose somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be that way. No. Don't cast me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation, God. Help me to go back to where I first believed. 
God, I want you to restore to me the joy of my salvation, God. Now, I, I don't even feel like going to church. And I was one of the ones that said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. But now I don't want to be able to go to church. I want to lay in the bed. I can come up with every excuse. Yeah. Mm. Well, I can't be in church on Sunday. Yeah. I can come up with every excuse. Well, I don't need to read my Bible no more. Yeah. Yes, better song of old. Take me back. Take me back to Lord where I first believed. Take me back where I first saw the light. Song says on, I feel so far from you, Lord. I feel like I've strayed. Yeah. And we come up with nice little niceties. We can spiritualize. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to be around folk. I can have church in my house by myself. Yeah. Grant me a willing spirit that I will do your will. God, give me another chance. Don't kick me to the curb. Don't throw me in the trash. Work on me. Turn this situation around. If you do it for me, God, you know what I'm going to do. I'll let other folk learn from my tuition. I'll let other folk learn from my stupid mistakes. My stupid sins. Because verse 13 says, I will, I, I will turn my tragedy into a testimony of your faithfulness because verse 13 if you do that for me Lord if you give me another chance if you don't throw me in a trap if you renew my heart if you renew my spirit yes. then I will teach other folk don't you go there yeah. I will teach other folk don't you play with God You see, there's no one better to teach you that fat grease is, that fat meat is greasy <laughs> than those that had heart attacks. <laughs> and say, so, you know what? Don't be like me. Yeah. And so David says, I will teach those folk that are hard-headed and stubborn. I will teach them your way. And when I teach them and they hear my testimony, when they understand that they ain't always been right, that God didn't just have to reach down, for some of me, God had to reach way And if they know and can understand what God has brought me out of. Sinners will turn back to you. You see, God has a unique way of beating you so down low till it will get your attention. And there's some things you ain't got to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Deliver me, God. Yeah. Deliver me, verse 14, from the guilt of bloodshed. Mm -hmm. I done murdered this man. Mm -hmm. You're God, my Savior. And God, not only if you deliver me from my adulterous attitude and lifestyle, but the murder that I did. Yeah. Notice. Mm -hmm. I will open my lips if you will give me another chance and my mouth will declare, declare that, that God is a forgiven God. God is a God of another chance. 
And God, when I look at what I've done, mm -hmm. as we saw last week, the two sins that David committed uh -huh. were capital sins. Mm -hmm. Sins worthy mm -hmm. of death. You're right, you're right. And you know what? When you got a capital sin, his couldn't wash that. Mm -hmm. Sacrifices couldn't be made for that. Yes. You know what? If you committed a capital sin, mm -hmm. the only way to satisfy that was you had to die. Yeah. David says, God, I can't give you sacrifices, verse 16. I, 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 you do not delight in, delight in sacrifices, God. For what I've done, you can't say, God, here I am. Here's a bull, here's a goat, here's a dove, here's a sheep. No. You got to die, bro. You don't take pleasure in burnt offering. Not for capital murder. Not for a capital offense. The right thing to do, David, is for you to die. God, you ain't looking for me to play cover. So my sacrifice, what I'm going to give you, God, the best I can give you is verse 17, the fact that I'm broke down now. You done broke me down. And Brother Ernest is here in the corner like a fraction. You done broke me <laughs> way down to the least common denominator. Yeah. You want a broken, not only a broken spirit, but a broken and contrite heart. God, I'm sorry. And, and that's what you've done when you've blown it. You guys say, God, I'm sorry. God, God I know that the, the, the reason why I'm messed up is because I'm messed up on the inside. And, and so since I'm messed up on the inside, it shows up. Be like the little boy, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny always getting in trouble. <laughs> Teacher said, Johnny, sit down. I ain't sitting down. Mm -hmm. Teacher said, Johnny, sit down. Mm -hmm. I ain't sitting down. Mm -hmm. and, and you can tell this story from years ago because see, she put her hands on Johnny. Uh -huh. And she turned Johnny every which way but loose and slammed Johnny. Uh -huh. And Johnny said, Which one? I may be sitting down in this seat. But I'm standing up in my heart. <laughs> and that's what God is after. A heart that says, God, you done broke me down. I'm sorry. I've messed up. I recognize the errors of my way. Yes. yes. And see, God says, I'm the leader. If you bless me, you can use me to bless your people. Yes. May it please you to prosper Zion, build up the walls of Jerusalem, build us up, God, because you ain't going to use me if I'm a mess and I'm the king. I need you to work on me so that you can bless our people. Then you will delight, God, after we are right, after we are looking, living in holiness, God, as we are living in righteousness, God. Then, verse 19, you will delight in the sacrifices of righteousness and burnt offering. They, they will matter then. God don't need your stuff. God wants you. And if you ain't going to give them you, keep your stuff. Whether you give God his or not, yeah, yeah. to 
he at you, you can cut off the sun. Whether you give God to his or nine, Dallas utilities ain't gonna stop the rain. God wants you. Story goes, as I close, one day, two individuals, and you might have heard the story before, Justice and Mercy, said, you know what, tomorrow we're going to meet up here. Mercy said, Justice, make sure you're on time. <laughs> Justice said, rather, Mercy, make sure you're on time. Justice, make sure you're on time. Mm -hmm. Mercy, rather, I'm going to get this right after a while, said, Justice said, mercy, make sure you're on time. Mercy said, justice, I'm going to be on time. I'm good. Let's set our watches because, see, you always show up late. No matter what it is, you always show up late, mercy. So justice said, let, let, let's synchronize our watches. Tomorrow we're going to meet at noon. Justice got there. Mercy was nowhere to be found. Justice got there at noon, just like he said. Mercy nowhere to be found. One o'clock. Mercy nowhere. Two o'clock, no mercy. Three o'clock. Mercy. Four o'clock. He called them with the voicemail. Yeah. Five o'clock. He hit him a message. No mess. No, no mercy. All oh, past dinner. No mercy. He, he got worried about it. Where's mercy? Where's mercy? He sent out a tweet. Anybody seen mercy? Tell him justice is looking for him. No mercy. Late in the afternoon, in the evening, no mercy. 10 o'clock, the news came on. Do you know where your children are? Yeah. Justice thought. I don't even know where Mercy is. <laughs> 9 o'clock at night. Where? No Mercy. About midnight, 